Hey guys, welcome to video three. We're gonna start making our mold with silicone rubber. So let's talk about what you need, okay? Uh, you need your mold ready to go. And not your mold, your, your model, and here it is. You can see I got it all clayed up in the box, mounted uh, with the walls in place with some clay to keep it all together, okay? I got a piece of put tape on the top to keep dust out until I'm ready. You need some mixing cups. Got these measured ones here, super handy. A bigger cup and a flat tray I'm gonna use. Uh, you need your rubber. I went with Mold Max 25. It's nice and soft, but it's strong. It's a pain to measure. It's 100 part A, this one, to five part B, this one. So you need, a, you need a scale that's very accurate. So I have a gram scale here that measures up to 100 grams. Um, do your research on this stuff and I'll talk to you a little more about different rubbers in a little bit. Uh, so those are the materials. One other thing, this stuff wants to cure, I think it's 16 hours at least, at 73 degrees. So uh, my house is not 73 degrees, so I'm out here in the workshop. I got a little warming mat here that I use to uh, germinate seeds for my garden. An aluminum pot on top, and I'm gonna keep my model inside this overnight as it cures. Okay, right now, I got a little heater blowing on it just to get everything warmed up and at the right temperature. Okay, so uh, think about that. Think ahead about your conditions. All right, so those are the materials you're gonna need. Uh, I'll come back in a minute with the next steps. Peace. All right, guys, let's talk for two minutes about different materials. Um, as you can see here, there are tons of different specs uh, that these that these, these compounds are are rated on, rated by. Okay, and you kind of want to find something that's going to work for us. Now, I went with the brand Smooth On. They have they got to have 50 different versions of silicone rubber. Okay, and each one has these specs. So you can really geek out and go nuts looking at all the different pros and cons, okay? The one I used last time worked really well. It was called Umu. It was 30, 30 hardness, uh, which is nice and soft. Um, Umu is, I made about 30 copies of my last body and, and the mold was still great. So to me, that's a good product. The reason I went with this this time is it's stronger. So, uh, Tensile strength, higher. Elongation at break, higher. Uh, tear strength was a lot higher. Now, I don't really know if that's a big deal, but I tend to look at specs and go nuts with this stuff. Now, other things you should look at before you choose, and I did not think this through. Two big ones that I think are going to bite me here. Mixed viscosity. Okay, so this is how thick this rubber is when you mix them together and are trying to pour it. 25,000, uh, that's gonna be very viscous and we'll see how it pours, but I think that's gonna be like, you know, cold maple syrup or honey. So this is gonna be tough to pour and I'm hoping that it's gonna wrap around all the little details. Uh, if you look at the Umu online and you look at the specs, it's much lower, I wanna say like a thousand. So that stuff poured really nice and was easily able to get around all the details. So I'm really hoping this doesn't bite me in the butt here today, but we will see. Another thing that makes this one kind of a pain is this mix ratio, 100 of part A to five by part B by weight. So, you know, I'm gonna need a couple ounces of this one and I guess maybe a couple drops of this. We'll see how that turns out when I, when I start weighing things out. So that's kind of tricky. Umu, I believe is one to one. That's super nice, easy to work with. Um, other little specs you guys can look at. Pot life, how long you have to pour it. So you got about an hour here. It says 90 minutes, but uh, that's nice to have all that time. You can really get yourself set up perfectly and give time for the air to escape. Cure time, 16 hours. So that's a lot of time to, uh, you know, just wait for it to pull out. So I'm going to pull this out tomorrow after probably 24 hours. And we'll see how that looks. Other stuff in here, not too important for making bodies. Uh, maybe shrinkage or something. You don't want these things to shrink too much. Uh, and then shore hardness, 25. So this is 
Lomax 25. That's how hard the rubber ends up being. Okay, 25 is nice and soft. Umu 30 works well. The lower the number, the softer it is. So if you have a very complex shape, softer rubber will allow you to pull that body out of the mold. If you have a higher number, it's going to be harder. All right, guys, we're going to start mixing it up. So first thing you have to do, how much do we need to mix? Well, it's all about volume. So I measured my box here, length and height to where I want it to fill to, that black line. Uh, width and height and depth, you get length with height to get volume. 13.78 cubic inches. That turns into 7.6 fluid ounces when you do the conversion. Okay. Uh, one, cubic one cubic inch is 0.55 ounces. So on my gradu graduated cups here, I need my total rubber to be at about, we're going to go to seven and a half cubic um, fluid ounces. Obviously the car in there is going to take up some volume. So this is going to be more than I need, but I'd rather mix a little more. So measure your, your volume in there and get it in ounces. Now my scale uh, only goes up to 100 grams. So I don't think I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to fill this all in one shot with 100 grams. So what I'm going to do, you know, for example, this empty cup is, is 12 grams. So I'm probably only going to be able to maybe do a third at a time. So I'm going to fill up a bunch as much as I can and pour it into this bigger jug. Once I get all of that part A, I will have my total, uh, a total weight of my seven and a half ounces. Remember, it's a hundred of this to five of this by weight. So I'm going to take my weight in grams as a hundred and I'm going to figure out what five would be. It's a 20th. So I'm at 20th of this weight at it for this. Okay, so I'm going to do this, take my time. Remember that 90 minutes working time is in your favor here. You have a lot of time to get it going, okay? Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing this, and uh, I'll see you soon. All right, guys, I mixed it up. I poured it out. It was thick. It was goopy. I wrote my numbers down as I went. The weight, I got right to seven and a half ounces. Uh, you saw a little cup at the end. I measured a half an ounce, uh, and that ended up being exactly 17 grams. So for seven and a half ounces, that's 255 grams of total mass of the rubber. I need, I need if that's 100, I need five parts of the other stuff. So you divide that by 20 and I get 12.75 grams of the blue stuff, okay? Or of the blue stuff, yes, part B. So I'm gonna mix that in now and I'll start stirring the rubber and I'll see you when we start to pour it at the next clip. All right, guys, we got it mixed up, got this color and I want you to see something. Those air bubbles coming up and you can imagine you get an air bubble caught right on your model and you're gonna have a big lump of plastic warts. So. The common way to get rid of these air bubbles is to put this whole thing in a vacuum chamber and suck out the air, which will which will suck the air bubbles out of the rubber, okay? Well, for those of us that don't have a vacuum chamber, there's a couple ways we can help this process. The first one that, that is called a high pour, okay? And we're going to pour it from really high up in a very thin stream, and that's, that helps eliminate some of the bubbles. Uh, they can't make it down through that thin stream. Another thing that helps us is just the fact that this stuff has a 90 minute open time, okay? We can wait for 90 minutes or 10 minutes at least while these air bubbles kind of rise, uh, which they will do naturally. So I'm gonna let this sit for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna do a high pour into this tray. Then from this tray, I'm gonna do a high pour into the mold. Okay, so I'm gonna use that high pour. I'm gonna do a double high pour. Hopefully that will get rid of most of those bubbles. All right, so that's my plan, and we'll see if it works out. All right, guys, here we are. It's sat for a couple minutes. I'm going to do the first high pour into this tray, like I said, and it's really more about a slow stream 
a slow, small stream. So this is going to take, I don't know, a couple minutes to fully pour it out. And this tray being shallower means that any bubbles that are left will be closer to the surface and then they can work their way out. Okay, so um, this is just my way of hopefully reducing the air that is in this rubber. And as I see those bubbles go over the edge from my viewpoint here, I can see them uh, breaking. Okay, a lot of them. And I can see them popping in the in the light here. Now the rubber is pouring into that tray. I can see air bubbles. So this is not getting all the air out, this high pour, but uh, hopefully it will help. Well, I know it's going to help because I can see a lot of these bubbles popping here. This will also help mix the rubber a little bit. You guys have to make sure the rubber is fully mixed, part A and B, because you want your mold to be consistently strong and cured all the way through. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm watching these bubbles break as they go over the lip, a lot of them. Now the smallest ones, I think, <clears throat> are going to remain. Um, once I finish this high pour, I will let it sit in that black tray for a few more minutes just to let any uh, any bubbles that I didn't get out come to the surface and then eventually you got to say good enough in the absence of a vacuum chamber which I lent to my good buddy Kev uh, we're, we're doing this experimentation for science <clears throat> all right we're getting there now I'm gonna use my stirring stick to help get the rest of it, but we've got a 90 minute open time. So I'm going to take advantage of that and, and go with it here. So I can bring this over and get you guys a look down in the, down into the goop pile there. That's how it's just piling up. You could still see some little air bubbles there, but it's definitely better than what it looked like up here. All right, so, all right, that's that. I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. All right, guys, our rubber's in the tray. It's aired out for a couple minutes. What I'm going to do now, we're going to start to pour into the, into the cavity here. Before I fill the outside, the main area, I want to do some pouring into some areas that are going to need a little help. So in the bed and in by the grill there where the, the winch is. So I'm going to do another really high pour. And I'm going to try to land it right on that clay where the where the uh, the tailgate is, the pickup bed, to fill in that bed. I don't want it coming in over the edge from the main uh, body. I want to fill that in separate. So I'm going to, there comes the rubber. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. This is, this is all for you guys here. This is not easy. All right, there it goes. And I'm going to let a very slow pour, as you see. And the rubber will kind of flow and fill in all the, all the areas. That's the theory, at least. This is where the rubber with a thinner viscosity, like that Umu, is definitely better. See, so it covered that area. I don't know if there's an air bubble stuck in there, uh, but we will see when the, uh, when the mold pops out. So I'm going to fill this area in here with this really thin pour. I think I might take this thin pour once we filled in the bed. I might take this thin pour over where the to the hood and let it kind of ooze down over into that winch area. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to get onto the hood here and I'm going to let it ooze down and hopefully fill in that winch area down there. Let's see here. Uh-oh, that's not a that's a that's a heavy little heavy seepage. All right, so you know, it's about thinking ahead and trying to trying to solve problems b before you make problems, like filling in these areas <clears throat> uh, to avoid these bubbles. So I don't know if that worked. It might have been a total disaster. Now I'm going to take the bulk of the rubber and I'm going to do a high pour down into one of these back corners and it's going to slowly flow around and fill up all around the body here. Okay, so if I try to get in there, I can't quite tell if the rubber oozed around the winch, but only time will tell. All right, guys, so I'm going to do the rest of the pour, and uh, we'll see how it comes out in 24 hours.
All right, <clears throat> my friends, it's all filled up to the line. A couple little bubbles coming in. I was really scooping it at the end just to get it filled up. Uh, I got my heater on it, the plate here. This should stay nice and warm, hopefully all night. I'm gonna cover it. And uh, this is where you just have to wait. And then when we open it up tomorrow, you will see if your hours of modeling and clay work and picking the material and blah, blah, blah have come out uh, to, a, to a usable mold. This part of the mold will be the outside of the car. So this is kind of the important one. Um, thanks for watching so far, guys. It's been fun. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. All right, guys, we're back in the workshop. Here we go. It's been uh, about 22 hours or so. We've got a nice firm block, and we're going to unveil this baby. We can see um, got a little air bubbles at the top. And uh, hey, okay, so let's peel this apart here. Get the tape off. This is the moment of truth. We love this part. It's so exciting here. Uh, went pretty well yesterday doing that. A little sloppy, but, you know, hey. That's how it goes. Now we've got a mold that hopefully, after all those hours of, like I said, modeling in clay, will give us uh, many pulls of a, of a quality, a quality product. All right, this rubber I can tell is, is stronger than that. Ooh, man. Oh, yeah. There it is. Ooh, baby. Peel these right off. That is super glossy, glassy. And man, it takes every tiny scratch and hair from me. And the plastic. Alrighty. This stuff trims easy with an exacto blade. It's gonna make a nice cubic form. Alright, so now we gotta pop this piece out. Let's see. Now I wanna be careful because I don't want to break any of break the actual model. So I'm going to kind of slowly release. I'm gonna look down in there. And I can see the see the body in there. See if I can just pop it out there from the back and the front is going to be tougher. So I'm going to pull it from the back and there it is. So that looks good. And now we can look at the detail inside. It all looks good. It did get around the winch pretty well. I see the detail in the the grill there is nice and shiny. Uh, it looks really good, guys. I don't see too many air bubbles on the surfaces. I see a um, tiny little bubble down here, okay, around the back. But that is really a, a detail that's down in there. Let's see, along the doors now, there are definitely some air bubbles in along the doors so that is a, that is a no good thing so we might be we might we might really be screwed with this but mm, yucko yucko but we're gonna just uh we're gonna make the inner mold you guys see those in along the sides there that's no good so now they do they do look a lot worse when I stretch it open so perhaps when we actually cast they will be very very minor. You can see also in here where the rubber took some of the primer off. So we'll see if that shows up. All right guys, so there you go. Pretty stoked. Got our first block. The detail looks great. All right.